Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining the 24th meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. It's great to be back at Randstein, and it's great to see all of you again. Let me thank Minister Pistorius for welcoming us again in Germany. I'd like to also welcome Lieutenant General Curtis Buzzard. He's just taken over as a commander of the Security Assistance Group Ukraine. And Curtis, we know that you'll do a, an outstanding job. It's also great to see Minister Umerov and the rest of the Ukrainian delegation. As many of you know, we have a special guest here with us today, President Zelensky. And Mr. President, your forces and your people have inspired the world. And you have seen firsthand how this contact group has moved heaven and earth to get Ukraine what it needs. We are absolutely honored to have you here in person at Ramstein for the first time. And Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Secretary Washington. Thank you for invitation and thank you very much for your uh, leadership in this Ramstein format and for working with all of our partners. And thank you, dear partners, for your strong support. Uh, Minister Pistorio, thank you so much for your support and highly practical and effective approach to cooperation and for welcoming us today. Dear ministers, dear generals, General Kaboli, General Brown, all, all our partners, I'm glad to, to see all of you and very much appreciate for continuously being with us since the start of this war and until now when our brigades hold a line on the battlefield thanks to the bravery of our Ukrainian people and your ironclad support. Now in Pokrovsk and in Turetsk, in the Donetsk region of Ukraine, it's especially um, overriding to feel the power of our agreements. Dear friends, today marks one month since our army's operation began in the Kursk region of Russia. This is the borderland from which Putin was preparing to expand the war into Ukrainian territory. He was preparing to launch a new offensive against our city of Sumy, and we have turned the tables and are pushing the war into Russia through our counter-offensive. Today we control an area of more than 1,300 square kilometers in the Kurs region, and this is, includes 100 settlements. A significant part of this territory was abandoned by Russian troops. They simply fled when they saw our forces approaching. Of course, a significant part of the territory was taken under control by our forces in the battle. So far, during the first month of our operation in the Kurs region, the Russian forces have lost about 6 thousand soldiers killed and wounded. In Kursk only and other tens of thousands of Russian troops in other war zones. Thanks to our actions, there is currently no threat that Russia will launch a new offensive operation on our territory against the city of Sumy. As was the case in May this year when Putin launched assault against our city of Kharkiv. We also see changes in the overall war situation. First of all, as a result of our actions, Putin has shown his real interest. And this should be obvious even to those who could still believe that Putin is at war to protect some of his people or some of his security interests. At the same time, as our advance in the Kurs region, the Russian army continues its offensive in Ukraine. The most capable units of the Russian army are involved in expanding the zone of occupation of our territory in the Donetsk region. This is a clear choice by Moscow. Putin wants more Ukraine to occupy than he wants security for Russia. He doesn't care about Russian land and people. He just wants to grab as much of our land 
and as many of our cities as possible. Secondly, Putin has already shed so much blood that against the black drop of this blood, Russia's attempts to draw red lines simply do not work. Instead, we need to keep our morale high for our joint values to rule the world and not the red lines soaked in blood. We have to sustain our spirit, stamina for the world to live by rules, to be governed by law and to ensure security for all, all of us, for all nations. And every operation that contributes to this deserves your full support. And third, we do want to end this war. We want peace. We want to save our people, first of all, our country. And it is Putin who doesn't want peace and is obsessed with territorial conquests. He wants our cities or the ruins that remain of them. And that is why we need strength. We need to force Russia to seek peace. We need to make Russia cities and even Russian soldiers think about what they need, peace or Putin. And it is realistic to push them to choose peace. Dear our partners, dear our friends, I want to say a few things now in public and some things later without the press. You all know that we are operating with a minimum of weaponry. Yes, we are grateful, grateful very much for every support package that is provided to Ukraine from you, from your countries. But we need more weapons to drive Russian forces off our land and especially in the Donetsk region. Now, there are many people here at Rammstein who are actually warriors. And each of you understands how important it is for a soldier to know that the front line is not only based on a soldier's loyalty to his country and his oath, but also on a sufficient supply of weapons. That is why it's important that every support package that is announced and promptly put to work on the battlefield without any delay. The fighting in the Donetsk region depends on this. If Putin does not have any achievements there, he will not have any achievements anywhere or in anything. Next, I'm grateful to all partners for the fact that the NATO summit in Washington was marked by decisive on air defense systems for Ukraine. And I will not speak openly now about the number of systems we have received, thank you so much again, but the number of air defense systems that have not yet been delivered is significant. This is what was agreed upon and this is what, was, what has not been fully implemented. The world has enough air defense systems to ensure that Russian terror does not have results. And I urge you to be more active in this work with us on air defense and we have already started operating F-16s. Thank you for the support, Secretary, and to you partners. And they strike down missiles and, and drones. They are very efficient, but they, they are few. You know about it. And we need much stronger fleet of F-16s. And I have proposals that I will say when the press lives. Third point, long-range capability. I'm glad that the United States, United Kingdom, France, Italy are represented here. Thank you so much. And I want to say this openly so that there is no speculation. Thanks to our joint courage, we have implemented very, very important operations, in particular in Crimea. These operations allowed us to return security to the Black Sea and our food export. Now we hear that your long-range policy has not changed, but we see changes in the in, uh, in the attack on storm shadow and scouts, a shortage of missiles and cooperation. And this applies even to our territory, which is occupied by Russia, including Crimea. We think it is wrong that there are such steps. We need to have this long-range capability not only on the occupied territory of Ukraine, but also on the Russian territory. Yes, so that Russia is motivated to seek peace. And one more thing I would like to say, uh, investments, we are very ready to produce more 
of our own weapons right here in Ukraine. We are ready to work with you on joint production. This includes drones, missiles, and other weapons that have proven themselves in combat and can strengthen your men and women in the defense forces after this war. To achieve this, we need funding. We are ready to quickly produce everything that will help us bring this war to an end, namely by putting decisive pressure on Russia for real peace. Let's make this fall a time for Russian aggression to fall in a way that will end the war and restore a reliable international security order. We must do it. Again, thank you very much for all your support. Thank you so much for the invitation, Secretary. Slava Ukraine. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of everyone here, we hear your urgency and we share it. Mr. President, this coalition of some 50 nations of goodwill stands united and firm. And today, we'll push even harder to step up our support for Ukraine. We're meeting at a dynamic moment. Ukraine continues to seize the initiative on the battlefield. And Ukraine's troops are now conducting an operation in Russia's Kursk region. The Kremlin's army of aggression is now on the defensive on its own turf. But we know that Putin's malice runs deep. Moscow continues its offensive in the east of Ukraine, especially around Pokrovsk, and Putin is repositioning his troops in Kursk. And the Kremlin continues to bombard Ukraine cities and to target Ukraine civilians. That is an outrage. But U Ukraine refuses to bend. And Russia has paid a massive cost for, for Putin's imperial fantasies. More than 350,000 Russian troops have been killed or wounded since Putin launched his all-out invasion. And since February 2022, Ukrainian forces have sunk, destroyed, or damaged 32 Russian naval vessels. Ukraine has driven all of Russia's major naval vessels out of Crimea and pushed Russia's Black Sea Fleet further east. Last month, Ukraine sank one of three Russian ferries in the Kerch Strait in Russian-occupied Crimea. And that seriously reduced Russia's capacity to move equipment and troops into Ukraine. A second ferry has been out of action since Ukraine's attack earlier this summer. Additionally, Ukraine has destroyed 97 Russian combat aircraft since the start of Putin's full-scale invasion. And so over and over, Ukraine has stood up to Putin's aggression and atrocities. And this coalition has Ukraine's back. And let me highlight some of the major recent steps forward. In July, Germany, the Netherlands, Romania, and the United States announced that we would provide more Patriot air defense batteries and components. And Italy said that it would deliver another SAMP-T system. And Germany recently delivered another IRST, IRST air defense system and more 155 millimeter ammunition. In Germany, the Netherlands, and Denmark have all provided more Leopard battle tanks. And meanwhile, the European Union is using frozen Russian assets to, farm, uh, to fund arms purchases for Ukraine, including more ammunition from the Czech initiative to rush more shells to Ukraine. And since our meeting in June, the United States has committed more than $4 billion in new security assistance for Ukraine. We are laser focused on Ukraine's priority needs, including air defense, fires, and armor. This contact group's innovative and nimble capability coalitions continue to, to help Ukraine fend off Russian aggression today and deter Russian aggression tomorrow. And thanks to the work of the Air Force Coalition, Ukraine has received its first tranche of F-16 fighters. And together with our National Armaments Directors, we are posturing our industrial bases to meet Ukraine's needs and sustain them long into the future. 
But for its long-term security, Ukraine must continue to boost its own defense production. And many contact group members are already supporting that effort. Just weeks ago, Denmark committed some of its latest $115 million security assistance package to buying arms from Ukraine's defense industry. And meanwhile, with help from several European companies, the United States is working with Ukraine to design and build a substitute for the S-300 surface-to-air missile system and the R-27 air-to-air missile. The United States has also allocated more than $200 million to purchase critical components to let Ukraine produce the UAVs and, and the electric, electronic warfare systems that it has deployed so effectively. Our national armaments directors are working in lockstep with the capability coalitions to meet these needs and speed up deliveries. So I look forward to discussing ways to strengthen Ukraine's defense industrial base as well as our own. And friends, this is a critical moment. Time is of the essence, especially with winter on its way. And we must all step up our support and quickly. So I'm pleased to say that President Biden will announce today an additional $250 million security assistance package for Ukraine. It will surge more capabilities to meet Ukraine's evolving requirements and will deliver them at the speed of war. Ladies and gentlemen, when this contact group met in April, President Zelensky reminded us all that aggression spreads when it isn't stopped. And he's right. If tyrants think that they can invade their peaceful neighbors, we will all be less secure. If autocrats conclude that nations of goodwill will lose, their nerve, will lose our nerve and abandon our principles, our world will become far more dangerous. So make no mistake. If Ukraine is not free, the world is not safe. But this contact group gives us, gives us the structure to keep Ukraine sovereign and secure. The coalition is built to succeed, and it's built to last. As President Biden has said, Russia will not prevail in this conflict. The independent people of Ukraine will prevail. And the United States and our allies and partners will continue to stand with them every step of the way. So thanks for being here. And with that, we'll pause while our friends in the media depart. Thank you very much.